What is up, YouTube? Uh, Heretic here. I am down in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, and so we're back with another player interview today, and I am here with the lovely Nicolina Moon. Hey, guys. So, uh, before we get uh, started in some of the questions here, Nicolina, if you could just uh, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I played Pokemon uh, for three years. I qualified for Worlds in the 2015 season, where I made top eight at two regionals during that season. Um, and Anna States to get my invite, basically. Yeah. So, and then I took a, a year, two years off, pretty much. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm getting back into the game now, so Heck looking yeah. forward to next season. Okay, yeah, that, that sounds really awesome. I know uh, you've done a little talking about that. Um, I know recently you and I have talked about it. Um, so how did, tell us, how did you get into Pokemon in the, in the beginning? Well, I started playing Pokemon back when the original game came out, Red and Blue, for Game Boy. So that was my first exposure to Pokemon was the video game, <laughs> the yeah. original one, because I'm old, but... And then <laughs> no, I, I opened some base set packs with my sister, and we played the game a little bit, um, not at the level that we all talk about today, of course, but, you know, it was fun. And then after a while, I went to college, I, I became uninvolved with Pokemon, but then kind of picked it up again by randomly buying a theme deck, starting to play, and then going online and getting sucked into strategy articles on six prizes, basically. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember yep. that was and like... then, yeah, my competitive nature led me to go to tournaments, so. Hell yeah. Yeah. So, how long have you been playing competitively? Um, so, I played, like, I guess this next season would be my fourth competitive season, so three... It's like half a season, and then two full seasons, and then I took a break for two seasons. Okay, so you got so, back around the same, you came back around the same time I did then, maybe like 2012, 2013, somewhere around there? It was like, yeah, I think so, whenever Mewtwo EX just came out. That was exactly when I when I X got back in the game, yeah, it was, yeah. The, it was the exact same time. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. Yeah, so yep. that was like early 2012, so we're looking at a little over five years now, over, yep, uh, yep. in terms of real time. Okay, so that's pretty good. And so I know you mentioned some of your credentials. You had a Worlds invite in 2015, you said? Yep. Okay, and two regional top eights and a state's top eight. That's that's yep. pretty hot, all in the same season. And, <laughs> and then in uh, in 2014, actually, I had 482 points. Oh. So I almost made it to Worlds there, but not quite. Yeah, because that was the last year, at least well, until this year, that they had made us have 500 to qualify. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, it was 500 with way less opportunities to get points, yes. to be honest. Yes, <laughs> indeed it was. So, yeah. now, you mentioned you had your two regionals, which, uh, now, were those, would you consider those your overall best tournament finishes, then, um, overall? Um, I, I think so, as far as, like, standard season is concerned, but um, that year that I finished with 42 points, I actually got a big boost at Nationals when I got second in the, like, regional side event uh, that Ben Potter won. So I feel like okay. that was one of my, like, toughest tournaments too, just because there are a lot of like, I played against a lot of good players, High like me and Violet, yeah. Tyler and Amira, Ben Potter, who was okay, my yeah, boss yeah. in that tournament, but no, no. So I feel like that was oh, a, a, Go a good performance from me. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, congratulations I on that as well. That that's, <laughs> oh, you absolutely should be. That's that's a really cool, uh, it's a really cool tournament finish, and that was actually an event I had forgotten about, you know, I remember I... Everyone I, forgets I about that. that but, <laughs> yeah, because it was like everybody who didn't make day two at, uh, mm -hmm. at Nationals that year, whether they needed CP or not, just immediately went in on that. Yeah, basically so. people playing for their friends, um, all of this kind of stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, so that was, a, that was probably one of the toughest events that we've ever had, actually, now that I think about that, along with the uh, Boston yeah, Open. Yeah, it was kind of like an LCQ kind of thing, too. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. It's crazy. Okay, yeah. so what um, like, do you have a favorite deck that you've ever played? Uh, or maybe one that you have right now, or either or? I think, I think, um, I really, I have a couple. I really liked to play CMT, which was oh. one of the first decks I played. For sure, yeah. And I liked Big Basics a lot, and I also really liked Frizzy and Genesect Roserade, which was what I made top eight with, um, Undefeated in Swiss and Canada. Oh, wow. Nine and O, or some IDs in like, there? Or? It was seven O two, I think. Okay, yeah. gotcha. And was I, it like, I actually, I tied once unintentionally during the tournament um, with Andrew Mahone, and then okay. I intentionally tied the last round. Okay, so that, now I'm trying to remember, was was that event a direct cut to top eight after the nine rounds, or was yep. it? Oh, wow. Yep. <laughs> so, oh, man. But, yeah, and then I played against Andrew Estrada on the top eight with, um, oh, like, I can't remember if it was Raybor or Pyroar, but I, I think it was 
It was one of the two. It was a bad matchup. It was, yeah, it was a fire deck. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Yeah. But, I mean, top eight still, that's, you know, nine rounds and, you know, yeah, was, direct cut in the yeah, top good. eight. That's brutal. So, mm-hmm. massive props and congratulations on that. That's, uh, that's really cool. Thank you. And then, yeah, it's like CMT, that really jogs my memory, too. <laughs> yeah, I never did well with that deck, but it was fun. But, um, anyway, so that's, I think that's really cool, you know, it's like a broad range, you know, some different kinds of decks, but I think I'm seeing consistency as really the big factor in all of them, which is obviously, you know, yeah. that's, that's what, that's what gets you Absolutely. into the cut, but wins tournaments, so. Right, I, I, I love I consistent decks that kind of just, like, are really reliable. Not really teching them out too much, just kind of being able to execute the same plan, you know, game yeah. in and game out. Rather and and than getting those decks are like pretty good at adapting. I also actually like playing Evital too, which was what I made my other top eight with. I played Night March Day One because that was a two day top eight. It was in Virginia. Yeah. I played Night March Day One, which I didn't like, and then I played Evital Day Two, which I did. Because I, I think Day One I went, I got in at like, I don't know, like 30th seed or something like that. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that that actually that's like exactly what happened to me at Fort Wayne that same season. Yeah. So anyway, that's um, I think that's really cool. You know, it's obviously a monster season for you, and it's yeah, really cool really to uh, yeah, that's always that's always fun to experience. I know when I had a run like that, it was pretty euphoric. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, good times. For sure. Yeah, and I remember seeing you at Worlds that year. I remember yep. Squeaky posting that picture of you after you guys played. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Yeah, he was because he was taking pictures of all of his opponents, yep. and he was taking a picture of me, and I was like, uh, Yeah, you look, okay. you, you looked absolutely horrified in that like, picture. What are you doing? <laughs> you were like, Yeah, basically. I, was like, I don't even know. I can't make the face. No, it's one of those things that I feel like. Cause, yeah, it was like an issue of the moment. Mm-hmm. So how um, I know you haven't played as much this year. How is your uh, how have your tournaments gone that you have played in 2017? I know I've seen you at a few. Uh, well, last weekend I just I just played the one last weekend. Um, I went. I started out. Well, ugh, there were so many problems with that. I, I ended up like what four three two, and that's when I dropped. When I got my third loss, I couldn't make top 64. Okay. So, because I lost in the seventh round for the third time. But I started off 1-1-1, one, 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 um, or 1-2-1, one, one, really bad. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, but I, they were definitely, like, my fault. My biggest issue was that I didn't keep track of time. I didn't wear a watch. Okay. And I'm, like, kicking myself for that. So when I come back and, like, make an effort next season, I was, like, a watch is, an, is essential now with, like, mm-hmm. I, I was so close, like, every round, like, when I lost, I literally um, was about to tie. We were about to tie, and then in the game three, with ten seconds left, I got donked. Oh. So that was, like, disappointing. Yeah, that's And then that's in my loss, he ended up getting the win on me on turn three, so it's just, like, I didn't oh. manage my time well. But, like, I had won the first game, mm-hmm. so then, like, it, sure. I was just gonna, not the game second game was not gonna finish. And then he ended up winning, like, on turn three of time. Oh, my goodness. You know, goodness. like, if the game had taken slightly longer, like, I'm not advocating stalling, but no, there's not a certain at all. pace you can play at. Because well, um, I generally yeah, play, I, play pretty fast. Now, with the watch thing, and obviously, you know, and, and it makes a ton of sense. Like, obviously, we know a lot of high-profile players wear them to yeah, tournaments. Is that something... Just, you have to do yeah, that's so, something. It's, like, another thing you have to pay attention to, because there's just not enough time to finish no. <laughs> an actual series in 50 minutes. There's just no, no way. Not, especially not if you go to game three. I mean, some decks can't right. even do two games, but... Right, I know. I've, I've played... Uh, yeah, most of the games I've played were just two, two games. Yeah. Like, hey. either... I, I played a bunch... Where the second game didn't finish. Mm. I think at least two rounds I won game one and the second game didn't finish. Well, that's the thing too, is that some decks I think will be more likely to finish games and matches as opposed to others, which might be more consistent right. and better, better picks overall depending on the meta, but they might not be as likely to finish that match. Yeah. I mean, I had a game where my opponent and I both didn't do anything for like oh at goodness. least the first five minutes. We just, yeah, it was like, just dead draw just city. Just couldn't get anything going at okay. all. And the game would have, had like uh, a very slow start. Nice. So I guess really what I'm just getting at with the watch thing is, I mean, and, and I'm kind of getting this from what you're saying, and I agree with it, just something, like, a, I guess maybe a piece of advice to, to players who maybe haven't started doing that, definitely when you, especially at big yeah. tournaments, go wear a watch at all times. Definitely. Just they haven't, they haven't overruled people wearing watches, so. No, which would be so terrible if they did that. It would. <laughs> I completely agree. You know, yeah, cause like you when have you... to be like, well, do I have enough time if I scoop now to play the third game? Exactly. Or is this game destined to not finish? Do we have five more minutes and like, mm-hmm. you know? 
for sure. But other than that, um, the other tournaments I've been to, I went to two cities, and I top forward one, and I bubbled at ninth with the only bubble at the other one. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. I feel like I, I did. I did. I was pretty happy with my um, tournaments this season, even though I didn't practice at all, and like I would not play at home. I don't <laughs> would not play well, you, before the tournament. Sorry, go ahead. No, you, you you haven't had the time, I don't think, between no, <laughs> between your, your stream and the fact that you're juggling two, you know, competitive games right yeah. now. And I'm always like, yeah, I'll go to the tournament and then when I'm there, sometimes I'm like, well I might as well play. And sometimes I'm like, I don't I'm not feeling it today. But oh. Well, and I and I, I know that you know you've you've had a busy schedule and you know you've, you've been tired. I think at some of these events from you know some yeah. of the other things that you've had to, that you've been juggling in your life. So and we'll mm -hmm. we'll touch base on your other competitive game here towards the end. Okay, so what are do you have like what are your your thoughts on the current format like that we're in right now, whether it be pre or post Guardians Rising, either one. Um, I think the format now is a lot better than it was when I was playing like yeah. um, full time. I'm glad the Night March and Toad are gone. I'm, I'm not really sure how I feel about Expanded. I really don't like that format, but I think the standard format we have now is at least... I mean, Decidueye is kind of a problem, but we just saw even last weekend, like, another new deck come out, the Quad Lapras. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I know people have been talking about it beforehand, but... Sure. So, yeah, the fact that the format's not even stale yet, there's not, like, three big decks that you have to play. There's, but there's a lot of choices, so... Yeah, really nice. I can agree with that. I think you make a great point there, you know, it basically just keeping the meta diverse, I think, and keeping it a yeah. little more unpredictable is definitely, yeah. definitely a good thing. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so now, beyond the format, um, if the, if anything, what would you like to see done that or do you think could maybe, like, improve the game, whether it's, you know, like, just the tournament structure or if there's something else, you know, and just, just in general? Um... I think that regionals should consider, for the larger ones, cutting to a top 64 for day two instead of a top 32, okay. because I feel like uh, there's just like a lot of people with, it, there shouldn't be people with the same record that, that miss pretty okay. much day two. I don't think that's really right. So, or, or at least like a certain number of match points maybe, but I know that would get like iffy with the numbers for and sure. like create like fives, but uh, maybe just cutting to a top 64. But okay. I also think, uh, I don't, I guess I don't really like the point changes that they just introduced. Yeah. I, and the, the problem I feel like with that is that they just kind of increased everything across the board, so that made it even more so that people that went to a large number of events would have a bonus, as opposed to like how their performance actually was at those events. So I think that they should have raised points for the top 32 as it is now, since that's day two. Raise points for the top 32 and the top 16, like top 32 on up and like not increase points for top 64, top 128, or league cups, or league challenges. Well, and another argument that I've been hearing about that is maybe because they took 10% of the first place points and just added it to everybody who got points, maybe yeah. like a greater bonus for winning, you know, or for getting second, as opposed to, you know, like not adding that same 20 points to first place and to 64th place. Yeah, exactly. So I feel like it's just inflation. So since it's mm -hmm. just like basically like across the board inflation, it just... Like I said, rewards people with more finishes. So basically, instead of people, people who that spent more money better. as opposed to yeah, doing people better. Yeah, people who go to more events. Yeah, buy your invite, don't earn it, you know. And that's, yeah, I think yeah. that's I, like, I totally oh, agree I can go that. to three regionals and top eight three, but someone can go to eight regionals and top thirty two or sixty four, all eight, and end up with like way, way, way more points. Mm -hmm. It's like kind of rewards mediocrity in in my opinion in that way, but as opposed to consistently top eighting and stuff. Right, so which like, it already did. It already did do that in a way, since there are so many finishes, but it just made it like way worse. I definitely agree with that, and I think that that's a really that's really good uh, input too. You know, maybe not waiting, not increasing the league cups, like you said. Yeah, like those those are not like I understand increasing regionals points payouts because they have increased in difficulty and attendance and um, you know, but the league cups are still twenty people in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so. for sure. I could definitely get along with that. So. Uh, now that we have your thoughts on all that stuff, which uh, future events do you plan on attending in the near future? Um, I'm going to Canada this weekend because I get to commentate. Heck yeah. yeah. Um, thanks to Kimoni for letting me do that. Yep. That's going to be really fun. I'm super excited. So after that, though, I think I'm probably only going to Intercontinentals. Heck yeah. Yep. 
So um, definitely be worth it. Um, like I, you know, like you said, you're uh, you mentioned you're commentating at uh, Toronto this weekend. Um, yep. When did when when did that like when did when did you find out about all that? Uh, I don't know when she announced it, like two weeks ago or a week ago. I'm really bad at keeping track of time. Yeah, that's um, no biggie. Yeah, but no, yeah, I think a week or two weeks ago she messaged me. That's really awesome. For anyone who's not going to the Toronto Regionals, definitely check out uh, Kimoni Twitch this weekend. Nicolina will be uh, commentating. I will post a link to the Kimoni stream down below, so you guys can check that out. Um, of course, I have to watch the stream now because. You're, because you're commentating. Yep, you have to. I, wa I wasn't going to watch it before, but now I'm being like, you know, I'm being basically held at the threat of execution if I don't watch it. Pretty much, pretty so much. support your friend. I'll quiz you I'm on just, it after. Oh, Jesus Christ, no. <laughs> My memory sucks. <laughs> okay, so that's all really cool, and obviously, you know, me, you know we'll, we'll see you at, at Intercon as well. Oh, there were two cats back there. Yeah, so. they're playing, they're showing off, they, I don't know, they, they know I'm doing something. So they're like, yeah. we're going to be annoying in the background. <laughs> Ah, it's no big deal. So, um, you play another uh, another game competitively. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Um, I play Hearthstone. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of why I, I stopped yeah. playing Pokemon, is I, I transitioned to playing Hearthstone. Um, I stream it every day. I, I play for a team. Um, I go to events and compete in that. Not, not quite. They're not as often as Pokemon events are, which is another, a difference between the two games. But For sure. Yeah. And you've been, like, I know you were at DreamHack down in, uh, was it Austin yeah. or Dallas or somewhere? It was in Austin. Okay, somewhere in Texas. Yeah, DreamHack was super fun. I uh, got to go to the Twitch party. Heck yeah. You feel special, but oh, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Met some really cool people. Definitely. It was a really fun time. And I know you you mentioned you do your, your Twitch streams as well. For That's mainly for Hearthstone. I know you did a, yep. uh, a Pokemon unboxing video the other mm -hmm. night. You... Yeah, I'm, I, I mainly stream Hearthstone, like... 90% yeah. Hearthstone, but I am going to be, uh, as I get back into Pokemon more and more, I'm going to be adding more and more Pokemon content. Sounds really cool. To both my stream and my YouTube. Content is irregular, but it's it's going to be more and more as yeah. I get more Definitely. ideas and stuff. Yeah, I want to, I want more ideas, and I think as you get more time to really to put yeah. into Pokemon as well, you know, right now, you I feel like, you know, your, your Hearthstone streamers and all that, just yeah. they, they take up so much of your time. Right, but... definitely. Stream is like the main focus right now. So definitely, uh, if you're interested in Hearthstone or if you just want to come and hang out, I mean, I don't really yeah. know anything about Hearthstone, but I go on, <laughs> I'm a moderator for Nicolina on her yep. uh, Twitch stream, so I, I just go hang out there, uh, troll her with heavy metal music requests when song requests are on. Anyway, um, were the, did you want to uh, give any shout outs to anyone real quick here um, before we wrap up? Shout out to my housemates, Igor Costa and Jimmy Pendarvis. Those are two high-level players we got going on right there. Me, <laughs> Pendravis. Pendravis, yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, no, they're they're um, the reason why I have to hear about Pokemon all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as I have to hear about it, I, I guess I decided that I might as well play. Yeah, so we, so we can we can thank Igor and Jimmy for Nicolina mm -hmm. still being involved in the community, which I'm yeah. gonna go ahead and thank them both right now for that as well. <laughs> um. Jimmy went to that went to the one K I was at a couple weeks ago and just trolled us all with that lap respect. I, I I told people on my stream that's the play for Virginia, and I, but I was getting wrecked with it on the stream, so everyone's like, "No, it's not. You're lying." Yeah, and it was and too. It was. I know that Jimmy was kicking himself for not for for backing out at the last second uh, of it and not playing it. I don't know. I was I was kicking Mahone for not topping though because I wanted those two to play a rematch in top eight. Oh yeah. That would have been hilarious. That would be funny. Well, maybe at the Nick Bailey Open. Maybe, yeah. So, are, are we going to see you there then? Or? I think so, probably. Yeah. I have to like double check the date, make sure I don't have sure. to like shoot a wedding or something like that. But. For sure. In any case, I would like to say uh, thank you to Nicolina for her time and for um, thank you for uh, coming on here and telling us a bit about yourself and participating. So, no problem. Thank you for having me on. No problem at all. Uh, and uh, we will all catch you later. Nicolina, I know I will see you hopefully at the Nick Bailey Open. I just have to find a babysitter for my son. And then yeah. definitely at uh, Intercon because I've already, sure. I've already registered for that. So um, that, that's not changing. Awesome. So um, nice. that's all we have for you guys today. And uh, thank you for watching. I will catch you guys all on the flip side. Cheers, everybody. Bye.